Welcome back to TNT, and today we are going to cover the coronavirus. But uh, before we begin, let's open in a word of prayer. Father, we bow our heads before you, Lord, and, and Lord, we are facing things in this world that we have probably never imagined happening, and, and uh, we are getting closer to the end um, in so many ways, Lord, either, either it's our own lives or, or the end of this world as we know it. But there's always hope, Father, and, and Lord, there's a lot of fear going on with this coronavirus, and there's a lot of things that uh, uh, we need to understand and be aware of as Bible believers, as Christians. And so, Lord, I pray that everything that has said through this study would be uh, directly from your Holy Spirit. And I pray that those that are, are, are afraid right now or concerned, that somehow your Holy Spirit would use this to encourage and give hope, Lord, through all of these trials, not only this one, but any trial that any Christian or anybody is facing right now. And I thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So, uh, I mean, you can't help but notice on the news that uh, this topic has come up a lot, and uh, even our president has addressed it. And... Uh, uh, I've taken some time and I feel that the Lord wants me to say a few things about this. Of course, I'm not an expert. I'm a Bible believer and I believe that the Holy Spirit through his word teaches us some things and has some things for us. Um, but to study this out, I always, I always take the biblical approach. I always study what God's word says and also from experience what God has, has taught uh, through history, and uh, uh, as he speaks to us in day-to-day -day, uh, Bible reading. But uh, if uh, first of all, how bad is it, okay? How bad is it? And uh, this morning, as, as, of, as of today, uh, we have 80,000 cases worldwide, and maybe it's even more. But worldwide, there's 80,000 cases. Now that's, of course, that's something to be very concerned with, and and I I feel bad. I'm praying for the people that have this virus, and we pray that they get better. We pray that God has mercy on them. But how does this compare with uh, other issues? I mean, this isn't the only thing that's killing people, uh, not only in in the United States but the world. But in the United States, how many cases are there? I mean. Uh, maybe less than 100. That's a conservative guess right now. But how does it compare with other issues? Um, did you know that pneumonia, first of all, pneumonia in the U.S. alone, pneumonia, each year, each year in the United States, there are over 250,000 cases. 250,000 cases. And 50,000 people die from pneumonia alone. Now that's scary. And why, uh, why aren't we focused on that so much? I mean, that's a, pneumonia is a serious issue. It really affects the elderly. Uh, many people, 50,000 a year, die in the U.S. alone. That's not including the world statistics. Uh, did you know in the United States... Uh, there are 6 million auto accidents every year. Car accidents. And there are 6 million a year. You know how many people die a day from car accidents alone? In the United States, 90 people die each and every day in automobile accidents. You, every day, every day that you, you go get into your car and you drive, you're taking a chance. You are at risk. Six million people get into accidents every day, or I'm mean, sorry, uh, six million people each year in the United States get into car accidents. Ninety people each and every day in the United States die from auto accidents. So there's a lot of things to be afraid of, afraid of. Uh, other than the coronavirus. Now, the devil wants to play into our fears, of course. He wants us to be afraid. 
But where does this fear come from? Uh, how did it get here? Uh, let's look at Genesis chapter 2. First of all, fear. Fear is a big issue. Fear is our biggest enemy when it comes to anything. Uh, of course, this is a serious issue, and we need to, t to address it, take care of it. Uh, we need to trust the leaders that uh, are the CD, uh, CDC that's trying to help and plant measures to help avoid these things. But as a Christian, what should we do? Number one is not be afraid. Fear is, fear is not of God. Look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, God told them, told them that uh, they had a choice. They could either eat from the tree of life, live forever, or um, eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the moment they do that, they're going to die. Look at what happened. What, we all know the story, but let's read it again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. God says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil... Thou shalt uh, not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. The, the moment that they ate of that tree, they began to die. Did you know that the moment you were born, you are, you are already dying? You may not feel like it right now. Maybe your body will be strong enough to fight off death for uh, five years, 10, 15, even up to 100 years or so. But eventually you're going to die. So am I. Uh, that is a fact, and, and we are all going to die. We're all going to face death. Uh, it's something that we don't like to talk about because it sounds so morbid, but the truth is, because of sin, because of what Adam and Eve did, and they, they uh, handed that, we inherited that from them, uh, physical death, because of, their, the, the, because of the consequence of their action. So we are already dying. Um, I know it probably sounds real gloomy, uh, but because of this, because of death, we have fear now. Look at Genesis chapter 3. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verses uh, 7 through 10. Genesis chapter 3, and verses 7 through 10. I'm going to read this. Genesis chapter 3. Verses 7 through 10. So, and this is right after they ate of the fruit. It says, the Bible says, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord, of the Lord God walking in the garden. In the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. This is the first time fear is ever mentioned in the Bible, because I was naked and I hid myself. There is something, sin, because of sin, because of the result of sin, we have fear. And now, um, it has transpired to the entire world. A lot of people might not even be concerned. I personally think that, we, of course, we should be concerned. If you have loved ones, especially your family, you want to make sure that you do your best to prevent things. Just like if you get into your car, you want to make sure that you, your kids and your wife have their seatbelts on. You want to make sure that you drive the speed limit. You, you're very cautious and, and uh, you obey all the traffic laws. You look out for other drivers, of course. So it would be no different uh, than in this situation. But every time we get into a car, should we be afraid? No, that's, that's the result of sin. We should turn everything unto the Lord. Pray. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Even if you're getting into your car, I, we make it a habit as a family. Before we even get out of the driveway, we pray everywhere we go. We we. We just acknowledge him in every way. That's part of our habit. Um, so because of sin, um, it brings disease. Disease is a, a result of people dying. People are getting sick every day, and there's going to be new diseases that are going to come out. 
Um, there's going to be new ways, uh, even though we have the best medicines right now and, and we have ways of, of counteract, counteracting uh, uh, some of these diseases, we're always going to have something that's going to come and uh, make us sick because we can't avoid it. Death is coming to all of us. So because of this, there's, there's a lot of fear. You know, it doesn't take much. You think about it. We live in a country, um, and maybe uh, if you're listening to this from another country, maybe your country implants standards as well, but we are building walls. We are building our military, this, the strongest that it's ever been. We are trying to eat as healthy as we can. We, we exercise. We, we try to make ourselves fit to, to last as long as we can. But you know what's What's strange, it only takes one little thing, one little virus to change all of that. It doesn't matter. When God wants to uh, wants to take a person home to glory, it doesn't take much. And uh, I, I remember the War of the Worlds movie. Uh, actually, I watched the movie with Tom Cruise. I've read the book, H.G. Wells as, as well. <laughs> and uh, one of the quotes from this book is, Suddenly... Like a thing falling upon me from without came fear. So fear comes from without. And fear brings doubt. Uh, fear brings uncertainty. And fear sometimes brings uh, bad behavior. It brings uh, uh, actions that have negative consequences. So fear is something we, we really need to try to control. And we can do that through the help of the Holy Spirit, through the power of God. How many times when Jesus was on this earth did he say, okay, I got, I got some bad news. You know, we got uh, a disease coming and you guys all need to be, pre be prepared. Let's take some precautions. And uh, the disciples are like, well, what are we going to do? He, did he ever say, be afraid? How, on the other hand, how many times, how many times did Jesus have to tell his disciples, do not be afraid, fear not, uh, so fear comes from without, and we know the source of that, too. Uh, one is the devil, of course, but the other one is sin because of the fall, because of um, making bad choices. You know that uh, if you study history in the Bible, you know that uh, God used diseases as a form of punishment, as a form of a, uh, kind of a restriction when, when Israel was misbehaving. Let's look at Exodus uh, chapter 15, Exodus chapter 15, and let's look at verse, uh, let's see, uh, 22, okay, Exodus chapter 15. So Moses brought, uh, Exodus 15 verse 22, so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and, there went, and they went three days uh, three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter, they were, they were poisoned. And uh, therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which he did cast into the waters, and the waters were made sweet. And there he made... Uh, for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. So God, even even though you may be sick, uh, God can still heal. He, his tree is the cross. We can look to the cross. His cross can bring healing. That doesn't mean every time you pray, if you're sick, that God's going to heal you. He may have a purpose for afflictions and suffering because that's part of the Christian life. But at the same time, we can look we have the tree. We have the tree of life. Jesus Christ is our life. Now look at verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that, uh, will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and will keep his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. See that? The Lord, the Lord can heal. And, uh, of course, this was written to the nation of Israel. But I believe, personally, we can apply that with the countries today. Um, it, in the United States, the, uh, 
thank God so far it hasn't really hit us, although it can. But uh, as Christians, as Bible believers, we need to um, make sure that we are living uh, according to God's word so that he doesn't bring all of these diseases upon our nation. Now, uh, we're going to talk about in a little while, is this the end times? Is this uh, the plague that is going to end uh, as written in the book of Revelation chapter 6? I'm going to get to that in a minute, so hang on. But uh, from this from this passage of Scripture, we see that diseases can come as a result of uh, a nation not living right. And uh, I, I, w- I would say it's safe to assume that uh, this world is not perfect. And so we should expect these things to happen because uh, God said that he was going to put diseases upon them that uh, that aren't living the way they should, that they're not keeping his statutes. And uh, we, oh my goodness, if you look into the news today, which we try to avoid as much as possible, but you can't help, uh, the, it's just, there's just so many bad things. And uh, it's a result of sin, and it's a result of judgment, and it's a result of people not living right and trying to keep God's standards, his uh keeping his laws so that's one of the consequences but it can be delayed disease even though we're going to die we're all born to die until that moment we can be delayed and we can have a little bit of a longer life if we try to live right for god according to this according to this book according to what's written here that's what uh we see now i know that there are many conspiracy theories out there regarding the coronavirus and there, there's some really interesting ones and some that are really compelling. And at the same time, there's logical explanations for this as well. All I'm going to say is this. The bottom line is God is still in control. Even if a, a, some evil villain created this virus and decided to disperse this upon the people, um, God's still in control and can still handle this no matter what man does. And so... Well, that's why it's so important to, first of all, look to God, look to the tree. Uh, even God used that tree, which he brings back in the New Testament, the tree, the cross. That's, our, that's what we are supposed to look to and live is through Jesus Christ. His, we look at his, his pain, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, his new life. Um, that gives us hope. And part of the hope, takes away the fear. The fear is the worst part of these diseases, these issues that are facing us today. If we could get rid of fear, we could do a lot more for God and uh, give God more honor and glory than we do as human beings. And we live in fear. I live in fear too. There's times where I'm, I'm doubtful as well. I have to be honest. But when we, we look to the cross, when we look to Jesus Christ, it eliminates all fear. It eliminates all doubt. Now, uh, in the Bible, David, David wrote a psalm in Psalm 38. I want to read this to you. Maybe, unfortunately, right now, maybe it's not the coronavirus, uh, but it's something, uh, something dreadful that you're going through right now. And, and maybe uh, uh, you feel overlooked because it seems like everybody's worried about uh, this virus, but not your particular issue. Well, let me read Psalm 38, because David, actually David had a disease. Uh, There was something that he had in his body that uh, gave him trouble. And uh, the Bible says in Psalm 38, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in my hot displeasure. For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth presseth me sore. He was in pain. It felt like arrows uh, pushing into his body. He said, there's no soundness in my flesh Uh, because of thine anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. Even David acknowledged what I told you from the very beginning of this lesson. It's because of sin. Because of sin, we have pain. Because of sin, we have death. Because of sin, we have fear. The Bible says, for mine enemy, for my, mine iniquities are gone over my head as a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. Um, People suffering, uh, there's so many issues, so many people going through things, and you know that the, they feel that they're in over their head because of the 
the, not only the pain, but the mental anguish. Uh, I know there are people right now that have lost sons. They've lost daughters. They've, they've lost a wife, a husband, and uh, that pain is killing them inside. Uh, some people are going through cancer right now. Some people are going through a disease. Maybe the doctors don't even have a diagnosis for it yet. And they're, it's too heavy for them. You know, it, it is heavy. It, it will, any, any one of us can get to a point where some little thing can be too heavy for us. That's why we need Jesus Christ. That's why we need the cross of Jesus Christ in our lives. Uh, in verse 6, he, David says, I am troubled and bowed down greatly. I go mourning all day long. Every, every moment of his life, he's in pain. He's in mental anguish. For my loins are filled with a, a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. Um, without going into full detail, that might give you an indication of what kind of disease he had. Uh, you can think on that on your own. But in verse 8, I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of the disquietness of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groanings is not hid from thee. He says, God, I, I'm in this shape, I'm in this situation, but I, I know that you hear me in all of this. I, I'm pouring out to you. He says, uh, my heart panteth, my strength faileth. As for the light of mine eyes, it has also gone from me. He was, he was in such pain he couldn't see. He was almost seeing stars. He was in so, so much pain. And then uh, in verse, uh, where, let's see if I want to keep reading that. I think I'll stop there. But my point is this. David felt pain and he recognized that God heard him and he turned it over to God. He, he, he complained to God. Now, maybe you are in a situation where right now you are hurting Tell God, complain to him, I'm, and at the same time, look at his sufferings and what he's done for you, and come to the cross of Jesus Christ while you can, before it's too late. Now, what is the cure? There's only one sure cure. Uh, someone made a, an interesting comment. They were just talking about, you know, God doesn't offer insurance, but he does offer afterlife insurance. That's what we are guaranteed if you trust and the death, burial, and resurrection for your personal sins. Now let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. And when he had called unto him his, his 12 disciples, speaking of Jesus here, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all matter of sickness and disease. So Jesus is about healing. Now I'm not saying that uh, we we have certain faith healers. If you go to them, that they are going to instantly, miraculously heal you because we we know from a, a dispensational standpoint that these signs were given to the Jews because the Jews seek a sign, and the gifts of of healing uh, was it was a sign gift for the Jews. But at the same time, Jesus can heal us. Now, uh, my wife and I we were talking about um, people that we know that uh, they, they were going through a, a sickness that was very bad, very, very uh, almost life-threatening. And they were giving up hope, and, and they asked us to pray, and we did. And, uh, and they were healed, and they, were, they had to acknowledge that God answered a prayer. You know, I'm not saying that uh, that doesn't give you the gift of healing, but if God chooses, call to Him. He, like David did, pray to Him because He can heal. He can still heal. He can still prevent this. Still not too late. And if you are in a situation, if you're in a country where you are quarantined and you feel like giving up hope, you cry to God. There is only one, one way out of this, and that's Jesus Christ. He's the only answer. He's the only, his cross is the only tree that uh, will give uh, the bitter waters, uh, a sweetness that we can endure these uh, painful sufferings. Now let's look at, uh, uh, I wanted to talk about this a little bit. Is this the end times? Because I've actually read where people are, are saying this is the last plague. Look at, uh, let's see, where was that? Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. 
Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8. Some people are suggesting that somehow this is the, the, the horse of death. Uh, maybe, I mean, it could be like the beginning stage. But as a dispensationalist, we believe in the rapture of the church. And that hasn't happened yet. The rapture of the church hasn't taken place. And there won't be any mistaking who the Antichrist is at that time. The whole world will know who it is, and he will demand worship, and that has not happened yet. Now, we have all kinds of speculations who that is, but it hasn't happened yet, and he will demand worship. He will demand that you take his mark on a, on a in your forehead or in your right hand, and you will not be able to live without it. He will make sure that you you either take it and live seven years or die. So we haven't got to that point yet. Um, because the church hasn't been raptured out. But let's just say, look at Revelation 6, verse 8. And uh, let's look at verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I opened the voice, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat upon him was Death, and hell followed him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beasts of the field. Uh, some people are saying that maybe this is uh, uh, part of the pestilence, part of the disease that's going to wipe out humanity. Um, I don't think we've got quite to that stage yet, but it will happen. It will happen. I don't believe it's right now. But I, I know it will happen. Let's just say, uh, let's, right now there are 7.53 billion people on this planet. Okay? So let's go by the statistic that a fourth part of the earth is going to be killed. That's a lot of people. Uh, first of all, the rapture of the church will take place. And I'm going to give a very liberal, a very liberal estimate. I'm going to say 10% because that, I mean, the Lord de demands a, a 10% of every tithe in the Old Testament. So we'll just say 10%. 10% of the, the, the world is are Christians, and it's probably maybe less. Um, I hope it's more, but it, it might be less. But let's just say 10%. And uh, after 10% of the, of the world is raptured out, that leaves 6 Point seven seven billion people left on this earth. Kind of interesting. I thought of the. I don't know if there's anything to that. Maybe that number is pretty close. Six point six point six or six point six 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 people on this earth. Six. Let me repeat that. Six. 0.66 billion people left on the planet after the rapture of the church. Now, if a fourth part of the population were to be destroyed, not only from the, um, from the diseases, but from the wars, the death, uh, the bad chaos taking place during that time, that would leave, uh, that, would, that would mean 1.692 billion people will die. Now when you start seeing a figure of millions of people dying um, because of one thing, then you know you are, are close to the end time. So we have 80,000 cases, 1.692 billion. That's a big difference, okay? So just, just trying to help to alleviate a lot of this fear, a lot of the stress that everyone's feeling. Is the coronavirus serious? Yes. Can, it can make you very sick. Even It's even making people die. Uh, is that a judgment from God? I don't know. It uh, could be. We know that we've seen judgments in the past uh, for other nations, not only the, the Israelites, the Philistines. Uh, he gave them a, a disease, I believe it's called emeralds, because they took the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, you see that all through history. There's been other diseases that I believe God has used in the past. Uh, but is that the end? Is this, 
Is this all we should be thinking about? Is this our only focus, our only fear, our only worry? Yes, we should be concerned, but at the same time, not afraid. I want to give you some hope today. And this is my, my, uh, the gist of my message today is we need hope. Look at Romans 15, verse 4. And then we're going to look at Titus 2, 13. Okay. Romans 15, 4. It's interesting, we were, uh, our, our kids are in ice skating, and uh, everybody in their, in their mind subconsciously is thinking about this coronavirus. We've taught our kids about this as well, that we should uh, make it a, a practice to wash our hands all the time. Just wash your hands more than normal, and if someone's coughing and, and acting uh, kind of sick, then um, try to avoid them. I mean, you should do that anyways, right? But uh, we were sitting there uh, on this bench. It's kind of crowded. Everybody's trying to get their ice skates on. And, and uh, after ice skating, the kids sat down. There was another uh, parent with their kid kind of on the same bench. Uh, we were all working to get our, our kids' ice skates off and get them uh, dressed uh, to leave. And they're, they're so uh, aware of this that even our daughter, who's five years old, uh, holds her hands out. She has... Uh, mommy, she goes, I, my hands, they, they need sanitized, help me. And she goes, do I have the coronavirus? And as soon as she said that, man, and we just, oh, okay, honey. But uh, that person that was next to us uh, was like picked up her kid and left. I mean, it's, it's created such a fear. We kind of joked about that. Now we know how to, if things are kind of crowded, how to um, give us a little more breathing room. But uh, we laughed about that a little bit. But at the same time, you know, people, people just need to, to uh, react in, in the ways they should, but at the same time, not be afraid. Let's look at uh, Romans 15, verse 4. Romans 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we... Through patience, we need patience, definitely, and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. If you are going through something right now, don't stop reading your Bible. Don't turn your back on God. It's, it's whatever's written here, even in the Old Testament, what we read will give us hope. It's for our learning. It will help us, help us overcome these fears. Also, look at Titus 2.13, talking about hope. If, if you have hope, you can conquer so many things you never thought possible. You can endure many things. Uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Uh, the Bible says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, going back to the sin, the back to the Garden of Eden, and purify unto himself, it's even getting rid of diseases that will eventually kill us, give us a new glorified body and unto himself, a peculiar people zealous of good works. You know, we have a blessed hope. We have a more blessed assurance than people that are suffering right now. If they're lost, uh, what hope do they have? They could only have fear. There's nothing to hope for, but we have more than that. We have Jesus Christ, who is our blessed hope. And one day we are going to see him face to face. Now, I know that I'm, I'm 51 years old now, and when I was younger, I didn't really think, you kind of think that uh, you have all this time on this earth to live. You really do. But the older you get, the more you realize uh, you start, okay, how many more years do I have left? And you start, oh, wow, you know, most of the people uh, that are this age are gone, and the statistics show. And it, at some point, you just have to start looking at the cross and looking toward Jesus Christ. He's our blessed hope. Now, how many of you have ever prepared for a vacation, a really a really cool vacation where, where you had to plan for a little bit uh, uh, or put a lot of planning into it and really uh, plan it real far ahead, maybe months in advance? And as you're planning that, you, you're thinking about all the things you want to do and you make 
notes, you make itineraries to, to follow and, and you're saving up for this, this trip and, and you're, it's, for a while that's all you can think about, all you can talk about and it's exciting, it's adventurous. And actually as you are going through the weeks uh, preciding that, um, you, it helps you endure some things. Like, you know what, a couple months I'm going to be here, it's going to be so great, so fantastic. I can't wait. Well, what if we put that mindset with thinking about heaven, thinking about Jesus Christ? That's the ultimate vacation. Uh, look at Colossians chapter 3. Look at Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 through 4. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, Set your affection on things above, not on the earth. Think about all these things we're going to be doing in heaven. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Already, we are cut away. Our souls are cut away from our flesh. Our flesh cannot contaminate the internal soul that lies within us the moment you believe. It says, uh, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear... Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. That's a, a wonderful, wonderful verse. A wonderful verse of hope that we are going to appear with him in glory. And think about those things. I, I, I wrote it down, but I, I need to, uh, I can't remember the reference offhand, offhand but it's uh, that there will be no more tears, no more dying, no more sorrow, no more pain. The former things are all passed away. God's going to make all things new. Now, that's the ultimate vacation. That'll get us away from this coronavirus uh, fear in a moment, thinking about where we're going to spend eternity. Now, if you have not made that decision right now in your life where you've not put your faith, your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, then uh, it, there really isn't much hope. I mean, I hope the best for you, and we're praying that you get healed so you can live a little bit longer. But the truth is, we need afterlife insurance. That's the only thing that's going to get us through the blessed hope. The, unfortunately, the, the curse of sin uh, is upon us on this earth, and there's nothing we can do about it. We can, all we can do at our best is prolong the inevitable. So are you right now 100% sure that if you died this very moment, that you're going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ? Now, if you have any doubt right now, if you can say, I don't know, then I can help you. There is a blessed hope. The Bible says, uh, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you have to do to be saved. All you have to do is believe. If you believe that uh, you're a sinner, and that you need God's righteousness in you, then you just say, God, I believe I accept what Jesus did for me on the cross. I believe it. And I want to take his righteousness from my, uh, in place of mine. I believe. The moment you do that, you are sealed, the Bible says, unto the day of redemption. There is nothing anybody can do to take that away from you. That's yours. It's a gift. Uh, it's not done through works. A gift is a gift. And God's not an Indian giver. He's not going to say, okay, if you do this, you can have it. No, there's no condition. Only believe. So I'm going to pray for you right now. And if you are suffering right now and you are in pain, remember that Psalm of David. Remember he was in pain. He cried out. And if there's ever an issue, please go to our website, uh, helpthroughhope.org. Uh, we have a section there for prayer requests. Or you can go to my Twitter account, um, Paul's Wall 16. We do daily Bible studies uh, every morning. Uh, we, we are going verse by verse through the Bible. We are in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 right now. We hope to finish the Bible and start all over again. Just do it every day till the Lord takes us home. But uh, uh, if you have a prayer request, please submit them somehow. I want to pray. I want to pray for you, and I know that others want to pray as well. So let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that teaches us and speaks to us through your word. First of all, I pray right now for anybody who's suffering, not just the coronavirus, but any kind of pain. 
Father, I pray that you would heal them. I pray that you give them a blessed hope today that they've never felt before and a renewed zeal to get back into your word. And, and because the Bible says that there's comfort in the scriptures. So I pray that they receive that today. I pray for healing as well. And Lord, I also pray for the, anybody that's afraid. Lord, that's just a natural uh, reaction to sin. But Lord, we are, we are made sin-free through Jesus Christ. So I pray that uh, we start looking at things through the spiritual perspective. I pray for everyone that is afraid to do that as well. And Lord, finally, I pray that if there is someone here that's watching this video that is not saved and not even sure where they would spend eternity, that after this, this video, that they make that decision right now to trust in you as their Savior and trust in the finished work for their sins and believe it, Lord. I pray that this would happen today, and I will thank you, Father, for everything, everyone that, that turns to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Well, I hope this lesson has been somewhat of an encouragement. I hope that you have a little bit of renewed hope. Uh, we are not at the end yet. Uh, we have the rapture of the church that will take place before all these horrible things in the book of Revelation uh, happen. And and I don't know if anybody that really wants to go through that. So I, I beg of you, please, please get saved today before it's too late. Well, I hope you have a great day and thank you for watching this video. Uh, may God bless you.